This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and here I am seated in my chair with Joseph Z. <laughs> I am so thrilled to be with you. Rick, I'm thrilled to be here, sir. Are we having a good time? We really are. You, you know, your studio, I want to thank your partners. This studio is wonderful. Joseph, who would have ever thought that from Moscow, Russia, the teaching of the Bible would be going to the ends of the earth? It's amazing. It's, it is mirac. You're living in a miracle every it, day. It's a sign and a wonder. It is. And I want to say thank you to every partner for making it happen because of you. We're able to take the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth. That is amazing. And I want to say thank you for that. But Joseph is here because this week he's sharing with me and with you about how to demystify the prophetic. You know, the prophetic really is a mystery for a lot of people. It is. They're afraid of it. They That's don't know right. what to do with it. Or they're very attracted to it. Yes. Some people maybe are over attracted Overly to it. Overly attracted to it. And so we need to have a balanced view of prophetic ministry, prophets, mm -hmm. prophecy. And that's what we're talking about this week, demystifying the prophetic. It is so good. And it comes with a study guide. And we're offering you Joseph's book. And I'm going to tell you, I read this book from cover to cover because I deeply care about Joseph and his wife, Heather. Thank you, sir. And I felt like this was going to become one of the foundational books of his ministry. So I wanted to be a part of going through it reading it, understanding it, so I could recommend it to you. And, thank you and I'm telling you, it is a great book. And Joseph has such a humble spirit that when I had a suggestion to change something, he just said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. There's a lot of humility in this book. And the back of the book says, how to identify real and false prophets, how to activate a clear-minded prophetic lifestyle. You can have a prophetic lifestyle. You can. How to master your gifts and experiences, Interpret trances, dreams, entities, deja vu. Now, that's interesting. It I is. was amazed about that when I read this. Yes. And strange phenomena. How to recognize the four types of prophets operating in the church, government, and marketplace. And I think that's what we're going to talk about we're today. Not. We will. Four types of prophets. It's going to really be good. So please stay with us all the way to the end and every day this week because every day is going to be wonderful. But you can order all these things by going online or by calling the number on the screen. And remember, we're also offering you my book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. I want you to have this book as well. You can order all these things by just making a call or by going online. And please, when you reach out to us, remember, we really are praying people. When you reach out to us, you do not get away without being really prayed for and the testimonies we have, people writing to say, ah, oh, you prayed and God did this. And I believe there's a miracle with your name on it waiting for you right now. So you reach out to us and we will pray for you. And you don't have to order something to ask for prayer. Just call us. We want to pray for you. We would love to stand with you in faith. But Joseph... <laughs> What are we going to do today? Well, sir, we're going to talk about the four different types of prophet and prophecy. Let's do it. Okay. Well, going into this, we get to understand something. There's a difference between prophets and the gift of prophecy. Okay. And the things we're going to talk about apply to both. They apply to both. In other words, a prophet is someone who has a responsibility to the body of Christ, a segment of the body of Christ, and the gift of prophecy is available for everyone. And so what we're going to talk about applies to both of those categories. So, By the way, I cover some of this in my book, yes, Apostles you do. and Prophets. Excellent, by the way. But I don't cover it in the depth that you cover it in this book. I mean, what you have done in here is just amazing. Well, okay, let's go on. Uh, your book, Apostles and Prophets, is magnificent. Oh, okay, Thank you. So there are four different types of prophet and prophetic flows. Now, you can have a major and a minor. In other words, you might have a strength in one and a less of a strength in another, but you move in both, just one less than the other. There is four types, so I'll just label them right now. It's Rowe, Navi, Chesa, and Chose. Okay, in my book, I only covered two of those. Okay. But you cover four. Four. Okay. <laughs> Three of the four are mentioned in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29, when it talks about uh, the acts of David, the king, the first and last. Behold, they're written in the book of Samuel the seer, in the book of Nathan the prophet, 
and in the book of Gad, the seer. Those are three of those four listed there. And seer listed there actually really can be used for both the last two, meaning Chesa and Chose. Now, I'm using a lot of terms here, but I'll... Now, you're not talking about the simple gift of prophecy that just operates in a congregation. Correct. You're talking about prophetic individuals who stand as fivefold ministry prophets. Yes, and this gifting can also work in people with a gift of prophecy. Okay. Yep. But the the gift of uh, prophecy works this way. Rowe, number one, Rowe, is a visionary prophetic gift. It's a visionary prophet. It's someone that sees or knows what to do. They know what to do, things that are happening. So there's a lot of what I like to say CEOs, sometimes that run companies that just know what to do. There might be a leader of a nation that just knows what to do. They have a sense. They can feel things and they know how to act. They have an ability to say, I know what to do about this. I'm reading the terrain. I know what must be done. That is a form of a roway prophetic unction. They just know. It's a visionary. They know how to do things. When God called you to do things you're doing here, Rick, as an apostle of the Lord, the way you lead and have a, a flow, there's a lot of roway you move in. You just find yourself doing things that are profound in this nation. Thank you. And I think it's wonderful. So you, you definitely move in this. But Roe is a visionary thing. It's like a sons of Issachar anointing. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it talks about there were the sons of Issachar, that they did three different things. They knew the signs of the times. They could understand them. Then they knew what to do about them. And many people stopped there. They knew the signs of the times. They could discern them. And they knew what to do about them. But thirdly, they also knew their chiefs and their brethren that were with them. That meant they had good tribal alignment. So they knew what was going on in the culture. They knew what to do, but they were aligned with the right people. Now, many people in the prophetic are not. They know what to what, do. What does that mean, aligned with the right people? It means that you are with who God called you to be with. It means you're with your church family. You're with the people God's anointed you for. Uh, you're with your right people to do a specific assignment. I say it this way. Um, if you're with your people, you'll fulfill your destiny. Uh, you, if you're with the right people, you'll know your calling. And when I met you, for example, there was a piece of my life that came into order and I knew God had put me on a trajectory to really hit the target. Mm. And uh, so you're my tribe, Rick. Wow. <laughs> so Roe. Okay. That's number one. Roe is a visionary mobilizing prophetic ability, prophetic gift or office gift. Okay. They mobilize. Two, Navi, N-A-B-I. And it's pronounced like Navi, like the... Um, there's a movie called Avatar, the Navi, uh, but it's pronounced that way, but it's N-A-B-I. Now, this is the most common form of prophetic. This is a bubbling up or a herald, one who declares and gives information like a trumpet. Navi has an inspirational gift. It's almost as if somebody has studied, teaching, they're getting ready to do what they're going to do, speak, and then they go extemporaneous. They go off the page and they begin to reveal information that they were not even really into. Suddenly it just comes out of them from the Word of God and it bubbles up and they have an inspiration and they release it in a meeting, even as they're teaching. It's an inspirational gift. Navi is a bubbling up. They just suddenly get an effervescent rush from the Spirit to say something. And that's what that means. It's very inspirational. Navi is also one that declares, foretells, and foretells the, the future or what's happening, but through inspiration. The third one, and this is important, is Chesa. Now, Chesa is a unique one. It means a number of things. And these are Hebrew words. They're Hebrew words. That's correct. Chesa means to look and continue to look. And one of the words it uses, and I don't want to emphasize the word because it has connotations to it, but really it means to gaze. It means to it's stare. Just, so it's really looking into the spirit realm. That's what it is. That's what it is. There's perversions of this in other areas. In the occult. In the occult. But in the natural, or in the, I should say, in the spirit, the way God calls us to, there's a looking that happens. I call it seeing and saying. So there's times with Chesa where you will look. That's where we get word of knowledge. That's where you'll get word of wisdom. Things begin to come up inside you, and you know things sometimes by looking in faith at things under the unction of the Holy Spirit. An example of this is in 2 Kings chapter 8 verses 10 through 12. It was Elisha. And he, he says here in verse 8, starting out, And Elisha said to him, Go say to him, You shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me that you will really die. Verse 11, uh, jumping to verse 11. Then he set his countenance in a stare until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. 
Elisha was staring at this man until the man became ashamed. Like, why are you looking at me like that? He was moving in Chaza. He began to stare until he saw his future. He began to see things that were happening. And of course, this is Hazael. And he said, why is my Lord weeping? And he said, because I know the evil you will do to Israel. He was looking at this man until he saw what was happening. That's Chaza. So that can be a word of knowledge type of setting where you're snapped into something that can either be an intuitive vision or a real vision, like very demonstrative, or a sense you have where you're seeing in the spirit. Now the fourth one, Chose. Chose is a very unique uh, uh, gift. It's a very unique thing that happens. This is where we get trances, dreams, uh, profound visions, things of that nature. Chose, it means to behold. It means to look as well, but it also has a sense, Rick, of peering forward or leaning into and look into the distance, like looking into the future. Chose is a futuristic prophetic gift. This is a gift that cannot be induced in any way. It's a gift that the Spirit of the Lord will suddenly drop upon you and bring into your life. And it happened with Daniel the prophet. It happened with John the Revelator. And when these things happen, they begin to look into the distance. Ezekiel 12, 27, it says, Son of man, look, the house of Israel is saying, the vision that he sees is for many days from now, and he prophesies of times afar off. And he's looking into the distance. This is Chose. Chose is the most unique one in a sense. As a matter of fact, David had a prophet with him named Gad. Mm -hmm. And Gad was one of those that was very much moving in Chose. When it talks about him being a seer, mm -hmm. that's one of the Hebrew words used for him, that he would peer into the distance and David would say, tell me what's going to happen. And so that's a gift that's very powerful. Now, I've had some of these experiences in my life. I know that you have. I know that many people have. But Chose is really where you walk into what I believe is a trance. Trances or seeing the future. And it's something that the, only the Lord can induce. So those are the four types of flows. You can get into them, we can, we can explore these, but truly, I find that many of them are misunderstood in the body of Christ. I believe Roe is a gift you will find yourself in if it's the way God's marked you. I believe Navi is a gifting that will suddenly manifest on, on people and is probably the most common one. Chesa, I believe, is a practiced gift that has to be under the unction of the Spirit. You have to be moved along by the Holy Spirit, but that is where you practice word of knowledge. And not, I'm not saying practice to just engage it, but you begin to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit and he will lead you and he will guide you. Well, you can, you can develop, you know, you don't develop the gift, but you develop your soul's ability to operate with That's the gift. That's right. Yes. Well, we can speak in tongues, right? We can suddenly say, I'm going to speak in tongues and then you can stop it or start it. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the control of the prophet. First Corinthians uh, 14, 32. And we recognize that means that there are times that you can and you can also withhold from doing some of these things. But word of knowledge is very important. As a matter of fact, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, when you get down to the middle and end of the chapter, it says if all prophesy, it says that the secrets of their hearts are revealed and That's they'll right. fall down on their face. It does two things. It convinces and it convicts. It's interesting. So it's for the unbeliever and maybe a person that doesn't have a spirit-filled walk. That's what the body of Christ is capable of doing. All right, now I want to ask you of those four. Yes, sir. Which primarily do you operate in? On a day-to-day -day basis, I would probably operate in Navi when I begin to teach and open the Bible. When I go to my whiteboard on my program and I begin to go into things, I step into Chaza. Chaza is when I begin to see and I begin to hear and I begin to try to sketch out what I'm seeing. Um, for the benefit of the body and of course having my sails up being in the holy spirit being rooted in the word of god and doing that every now and then i've had a chose encounter but we can move in all four of these but there are majors and minors so the most common for me would probably be in a day-to-day -day operation navi and roe those would probably be my two. i don't talk about it very often but i move in some of those i know that i do i see things in the spirit and so I have a great appreciation for prophetic ministry. I really do, friends. But I have a better appreciation for prophetic ministry that is also well-balanced in the Bible. That's right. And that's why I appreciate Joseph. Joseph loves the Word of God. That's right. And his book is filled with the Bible. This is not just theory 
or just experience. By the way, experience is important. It is. But it never supersedes the Word of God. Never. And this book is just loaded with Scripture about prophetic ministry. But I move in some of that as well. And, I, and I'm thankful. But you know what, Joseph? I just don't, I don't often tell what I see. But often I see things, and I know it's just for me. It, it helps me to know where I'm headed, where the ministry is headed. The gifts of the Spirit are essential for us. They are not optional. It's true. Well, I'll tell you, you know, without going into all of it, but you and I have had some wonderful conversations, and you move in a gift of prophecy in that whole spectrum in a way that uh, is unlike many people I've met. And I'm very honored and thrilled to be with you. Well, I feel the same about you. Well, thank you, sir. All right, what else do you want to tell us today? Well, when we understand these gifts, the word chose, we were talking about that, that one that talks about trances, mm -hmm. dreams, revelatory mm -hmm. things. I believe there's much more happening in the realm of the spirit than we might understand. And God gives us glimpses and we're to seek him in this. I, I, I'm reminded of the encounter that Moses had on uh, when he was hidden in the cleft of the rock mm -hmm. and the Lord began to appear to him and Lord, Moses says, show me your glory. I want to see it all. And I find this very fascinating. I think this is in the Chose spectrum. God says to Moses, I, no man can see my face and live, mm -hmm. but I will show you my back. I'll show you my hinder parts. I will show you behind. And I find that interesting. And the Hebrew word there is a core, Rick. It's a very interesting word, a core. And so Moses is seeing, and I believe in that moment, a, a chose happened to Moses. And I believe he was taken in a trance and shown the book of Genesis. I believe that's when he began to write. He began to write out in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and all these things. And Moses began to write. I believe there was a chose experience in that. The unique part of this is, now we'll let everybody just discern this and decide what's biblical or not, but I thought about it, and that word accor has to do with going back, and it also has the connotation of going forward, which I find very interesting. I don't know where this starts and stops, Rick, but the word accor mentions that it means going forward and in a north direction. And so when Moses had this encounter where he was shown the glory of the Lord, I believe he was not only shown the backwards parts of God from the beginning, mm. he may have had a snapshot of the future. We well, you know God is outside of time. He is. You know, if, if we're linear, we tend to look at what's right in front of us and behind us, but God is above time. Yes. He can see the past and the present all at once. Yeah. And sometimes when you move in these realms, you see snapshots of the past, you see things in the future. Yeah. And I think part of the wisdom of a, a prophetic brother is knowing how to interpret all of that. That's and interpretation is right. another issue we need to talk about. Very important. And we will. We will get into it heavily, actually. That's where people make a lot of their mistakes. They really do. They do. Well, Moses, maybe, that's when he, maybe, showed up and met Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Isn't that something? Maybe. Very interesting. He went backwards, and in that moment, he said, show me your glory. The Lord said, I can't show you my face, but I'll show you backwards. And the Hebrew word is, there's a brief moment of forwards. Now, I like what you just said. You said maybe. Maybe. And that's important. It is important. Because sometimes when we deal with issues, we don't know. Yes. It's, it's a maybe. It's like on this set, I've got those dinosaur bones right up. <laughs> yes. And the reason I have them is because we don't know everything. I don't know where they fit in history. Yeah. And so we, we have to deal with what we really know is revealed. That's right. And if we get to an area that's a little fuzzy, uh, we need to honestly say maybe. Maybe. And I, that's very respectful. I think it's good because, you know, there's a lot to be interpreted in the Word of God. But wouldn't it be interesting if that was the case? It really would be. I've never heard that in my life. Well, backwards and forwards. And then the Lord said, no man can look at my face and live. The connotation there could be again, mm -hmm. that the Lord said, I can show you this, I can show you that, but I can't show you everything at once. Mm -hmm. If you see my face, the perpetual knowing of everything, it'll wipe you out. That's amazing, Joseph. Wow. Can we get into interpretation? We will. Can we do that in the next program? Absolutely. You've got a particular teaching mm -hmm. about how it seemed a prophecy was given that was wrong because two prophets. I can't wait prophesied two different things, who's right, who's wrong. And the truth is, they were both right. They were both right. They were in both the Bible. right. It's in the Bible. And it's amazing. Can we go there tomorrow? I can't wait. Please do not miss tomorrow. And I want you to order Joseph's book. It is just remarkable.
You know, there's been a lot of confusion, particularly in the last couple of years, about prophetic ministry. Been a lot of political prophecies that never happened. Right. You know, it's interesting that Brother Hagen, who I think is one of the greatest prophets of, of our generation. Amen. He stayed away from political prophecies. Powerful. He, he said it's just a, a place that it's best for us not to go. Wow, that's wisdom. And very often we get in trouble when we begin to make political predictions. Yes. But anyway, this book is great. And tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to talk about interpretation. I look forward to it, sir. It's going to be good. But hey, we've got more to say. So stick with us and we'll be back in just a moment. Someone has asked the question, what's going to happen in heaven during the Great Tribulation? Well, we know that the Great Tribulation will begin when the church is raptured, and I'm a firm believer in the rapture of the church. And as soon as we are vacated, God's wrath is going to begin to be poured out on the earth for seven years. But while God's wrath is being poured out on earth, a lot of activity is going to be happening in heaven with us. We're going to be attending the marriage feast of the Lamb. And during those seven years, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, each of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give account for our level of obedience in this life. And our future occupation in eternity will be determined by how faithful we were now, which means, my friends, this is a qualifying time for what we're going to do in the future. And if you want to do something wonderful in eternity, then God needs to find you faithful now. But during the great tribulation, heaven is going to be filled with activity as we celebrate with the Lord at the marriage feast of the Lamb. And as each one of us are called singularly before the judgment seat of Christ for Jesus to reward us for our levels of obedience. Many people claim to be prophets today. Some are, and some are not. And a lot of attention has been given to the subject of prophetic ministry on social media and the internet that has caused confusion. But in this informative series, Rick Renner and Joseph Z push back the confusion to bring clarity to the body of Christ on this vital subject. In Demystifying the Prophetic with Joseph Z, you'll learn how to recognize a real prophet, the marks of a false prophet, how to discern whether a prophetic word is true or false. This powerful five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. We are also offering Joseph Z's masterful new book, Demystifying the Prophetic, Understanding the Voice of God for the Coming Days of Fire. It is vital that we understand exactly what the Bible says on this subject in this 448-page book, loaded with insights that are both spiritual and practical will help you understand the ministry of the prophet. Rick Renner says, this book holds answers that will thrill the hungry heart and set it on a course to take it into the deep things of God. Demystifying the Prophetic by Joseph Z is available today for $25. Don't miss this special offer. Bundle the series Demystifying the Prophetic with Joseph Z and the accompanying book Demystifying the Prophetic. And for a limited time, we are also offering Rick's book Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the world before the flood for a special pre-sale discounted price. Go to renner.org to order. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You might ask, Rick, where are you? Well, this is one of the additional television studios for our TBV network, which is our Russian channel, which covers all the 11 time zones of Russia. Did you hear that? Russia has 11 time zones. And in those 11 time zones are people looking for Bible teaching, news, information. And in this particular studio, we do interviews, we do talk shows, we do news, we even do the weather, and it's all packaged to bring the teaching of the Word of God into people's homes across 11 time zones. But in addition to TBV, we also have GNC, which is our international satellite network, which covers 83 nations of the world. So wherever Russian speakers are living, we're reaching them with the teaching of the Word of God, either through TBV or GNC. And that is amazing. You know, when Denise and I first began our ministry, God gave us Romans 10, 18, which said their voice would go into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. And have we ever seen that come to pass? And one reason we've been able to do it is because of our partners, which help us. 
And partners, I want to say thank you for helping us with TVV, the national channel in Russia, and GNC, the satellite network, which is reaching into 83 nations of the world. Together, we're really reaching people. And if you're not a part of that giving team yet, please pray about becoming a part of the team to take the Word of God on one of these two networks to Russian speakers all over the world. Well, this has really been good today. And Joseph, you wanted to say something? You know, I did, Rick. Uh, I want to look right at you. Uh, those of you who are partners of Renner Ministries, can I just personally thank you? I am fruit of your partnership with this ministry. And when you partner here, I got to tell you, they really do call you. I get phone calls from Renner Ministries. We are partners like you. And I want to say to you very clearly, this is a wonderful ministry. And my wife, Heather, and I, we're so grateful to all of you for supporting Rick and Denise and their tremendous reach around the world because, again, we are fruit of it. I bless you and thank you for partnering with this ministry. I just want to thank your partners. Thank you, Joseph. Yes. Thank you. My privilege. And if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner. We need you. Hey, and remember, we're offering you Demystifying the Prophetic. It's everything that Joseph and I are discussing this week with a study guide that accompanies it. And we're offering you his book by the same title. Guys, this book is really good. In fact, you should order several because so many people have questions these days about what is right and wrong in prophecy. And I like what Joseph says, that we need to right-size a lot of things that have been wrong. Yes. And I believe this book does that. Anyway, it's really, really good. The subtitle says, Understanding the Voice of God for the Coming Days of Fire. Well, that's us. Amen. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call, but we're out of time. I speak the blessing of God to you. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to talk about interpretation. Yes, sir. Is that okay? You will do it. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord, wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life, amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.